What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 17th of June in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and keeping my eyes on to trade in this week that we're currently in, the third week of June in 2019, as well as just going over some news that I'm personally watching that I think and, and keeping an eye on that I personally think is going to fluctuate the markets a lot here over the next com coming days. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, all I ask from you is to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general and stay connected with our community guys by joining the two links down below the discord and the facebook groups both of those are 100 free of charge and you'll be able to talk to hundreds of other investors and traders with similar mindsets as you so without further ado let's just get right into it guys starting off here with the s p 500 the 500 largest publicly traded u.s companies it ended up closing up today up in the green up two dollars and 69 cents up a measly 0.09% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing up the same on a percentage basis as the S&P 500, 0.09%, and it was up $22.92, nearly $23 here at the close today. And the NASDAQ did very well today, up 0.86%, up $65, closing above $7,500 today. And this is mostly due to tech stocks. They did very well today, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Facebook especially, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, the couple big tech stocks that I personally follow, they all did quite well today. So other than the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow, you guys can see it was pretty flat, continuing this kind of consolidation uh, range that it's been in over the past couple of days, it pretty much continued that today. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if we go to the 10-day, 30-minute, the consolidation that we've been seeing on the S&P has been very, very strong. We noticed ever since we got that double top at about 29.10, we sold off to about 28.75, and we've been hovering around, you know, 28.75 to about $2,900 here over the past one, two, three, and today marks the fourth day of trading. And this, in my opinion, is kind of the calm before the storm because we know on this Wednesday, 2 p.m., the Fed is going to come to a decision on whether or not it's going to cut interest rates right now. And for those of you guys that don't know, we got news of a potential interest rate cut a couple of weeks ago, or at this point, it was like two weeks ago, and that caused the market to fly. The markets recovered very heavily, you know, from this, this hint of news that the Fed could potentially cut the interest rates. And now we're noticing again the consolidation. The meeting is coming up um, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Wednesday. And if the Fed, guys, this is why I'm saying it's the calm before the storm. You know, this can really, you know, pump the markets to the upside or the downside. Let's say the Fed, right, they come out and they say they are going to cut interest rates. In my opinion, if they do that, that's going to pump in even more optimism into the stock market. Just think about it, guys. The markets flew up and recovered this quickly based on a simple hint of an interest rate cut. Think about if it actually happens. I think, at least in the short term, the market is going to go crazy and maybe rally up to all-time highs again, right? Because this is kind of like a last-ditch effort, you know, for the Fed to stimulate the economy economy and continue this run that the market, the stock market that is, has been seeing over the past couple of weeks, months, and of course, years, right? And let's say the flip side, let's say the Fed, you know, they don't 
they don't cut the rates. Let's say they just keep them the same. I personally think, you know, this can dump the markets in the short term, which again is why, you know, this is the calm before the storm. Once we get this decision, the market is going to pick a direction. It's going to pop up or it's going to sell off pretty aggressively based on what the Fed, you know, is doing here, which is why, again, the markets just have been very, very calm, very, very steady. They've been consolidating. You know, things are going to get crazy here in the next couple of uh, days and weeks, in my opinion, guys, because let's say they don't cut the Fed rate or uh, the interest rate here. Let's say they don't do anything to it. In July, the next meeting, they might cut it in that meeting. So, you know, th there's just a bunch of things that, that, that are going on right now over the next couple of weeks and months in the market regarding the interest rate, uh, you know, potential cut. I'm just very excited to see how it does, you know, affect the overall market. So as of now, technically speaking on the SPX, nothing has really changed from the past couple of videos that I've made talking about the technicals. We're simply trading above 2885. We're holding that level old resistance right now, you know, as a new support with the uh, resistance where we are right now at about 29.15. Uh, so we're simply trading between 28.85, 28.75, and 29.15. And again, once we get that decision from the Fed, this is going to pop us either out of the resistance here above 29.15, or it's going to sell us off, you know, maybe back down to let's say 28.50 on that 180 SMA. If we sell below, we may be going to 2830, 2800, 2735. These are a couple of levels that we could be selling off to on the S&P 500. So going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you're seeing a bunch of the same in terms of technicals. We've been consolidating over the past couple of days, ever since we got the double top at about 26200. You know, we've been really just chilling above 26,000 with a resistance at about $26,200. So we're we're simply trading in a 200 point range right now. And again, when, when the Fed comes out with their decision, and by the way, the, uh, the discussions are actually starting tomorrow, you know, when the Fed comes out, this is going to push Dow up above 26,200, which is a resistance. If we see, you know, a Fed cut and the, and the markets go bullish, you know, we could be popping up here 26,200, 26,500. Those are the next levels that I'm personally watching. But let's say there's no Fed uh, interest rate cut. Let's say the markets take that negatively because they're pricing it in right now so heavily, in my opinion. You know, we may be selling off from there, going back down to, let's say, $26,000 flat would be the next support. Obviously, from there, we may be breaking down to $25,500, you know, and, the, and the supports go on from there, right? We may be going down to, let's say, $25,000 flat. These are the levels that the, da uh, the Dow could end up selling off to. So, again, not much different from yesterday's video uh, or the previous video that I did on the market. Nothing has really changed in terms of the Dow and the S&P from a technical perspective. But if we're going over here to the NASDAQ, this one has changed a bit because we saw a big run today, and this is showing about a $7 move right now, but this is um, the after hours and in terms of uh, the futures here. But if we go on the one day, one minute, you guys can see the big push that we did have this morning when the markets opened and we maintain that level throughout the day. And, and what is this doing to the NASDAQ, guys? It's kind of pushing us out of this little downwards channel that I had drawn out from these trend lines that we see here that we've kind of been trading within over the past couple of weeks. So here, this bullish move that we are seeing, which is the breakout of the resistance, of this downwards channel, this can be something that pushes the NASDAQ up more on a technical basis here over the next couple of weeks and days, which is something that I'm interested in, right? And again, if we get that rate cut, who knows, guys? The NASDAQ, it could be pushing up very heavily from there. We could break out of the 7,600 level of resistance, which is the next level that we're facing here. We could be going up to 7,800 again. Who knows? We might be up to those all-time highs if that does end up happening. So, 20-day, one-hour chart, you guys can see, again, we broke that, 
you know, five day, five minute, you guys can see, you know, the upwards trend that's been forming here. You know, everything is looking for and pointing to a breakout right now, in my opinion, on um, the NASDAQ. But don't just, um, you know, don't just think it's going to break out 100% here again. This Fed meeting is going to be a huge catalyst to the upside or, or to the downside for the markets. And I'm very, very excited to see what is going to happen. And that's really what I'm waiting for right now to see a, a direction uh, up or down in the overall stock market. I think it's going to fluctuate it a lot. So that was the market update portion of today's video, guys. If you enjoyed um, that portion of the video, let me know. Drop a like down below and hit that um, uh, hit, hit a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. What do you guys think about the Fed? What do you guys think about the current stock market? What are your uh, thoughts on the technicals? I would love to know. So getting into what I personally um, traded today, I traded Beyond Meat, which was actually a stock that I called out in yesterday's video. And this stock today, guys, went up 12% up nearly $20 um, per share here and this is just uh, uh, this is just crazy guys because this stock went from $45 all the way to 186 it cooled off a bit we were holding that 50 SMA like we said in yesterday's video and we were kind of in this wedge as you guys can see you know from the trend lines that I drew in yesterday's video and I was talking about how if we were to break out of this resistance, um, you know, of this resistance of the wedge, that would be a huge breakout. And what did we do? A bullish breakout. And what did we do this morning, guys? You guys can see we were we were running up pretty aggressively <clears throat> in the pre-market session. If we go to the one day, one minute, actually, let's go to the five day, five minute. You guys can see it even better, right? Take a look at the resistance of this wedge. You guys can clearly see it, right? We started to break out of it this morning. We were riding the one or uh, the 50 SMA, rather, pretty much continuing this little uptrend <clears throat> that we've been on over the past four days. And when we broke out of the resistance, and when we, you know, popped up so aggressively, nearly, you know, five six percent, uh, you know, when the market opened or right near when the market opened, I knew this was going to be a breakout, or at least it was on my eyes um, for potential trade. Due to the breakout that we saw and it ended up playing out very nicely guys we opened up here we popped up we sold off and the thing that I was looking for here after the sell-off is I wanted to see you know are we going to maintain the trend from pre-market hours and also are we going to maintain the trend above this 50 SMA which has been a support if we look, you know, over the past couple of days and the fact that we pulled back, we held those levels, the 50 SMA and that trend line that I just drew for you guys, that gave me the notion, the confirmation that we're holding the uptrend and this could be a dip by opportunity. And that's exactly how I ended up viewing it. Ended up getting into Beyond Meat after this pullback, the retest on the 180 SMA here on the intraday chart. We started to pop back up, ended up getting in at about 163 163.50, 163.60 um, is when I ended up getting into this position as we started to break out of this um, resistance from the pre-market session at about 8.15 a.m. Um, pre-market hours Eastern Standard Time today. So I got in right around there after the break of that resistance and I wrote it up pretty much to the resistance that we were at um, from this morning's pop up to about 167.80. I didn't sell off at the complete tippy top here, but from where I got in, up nearly to that resistance, I ended up selling off right around here. You know, I ended up getting out with about a 1.75, 1.8% profit as I sold out at about 166, 50 ish, 166, uh, 60, right around there. So I made roughly $3 per share on Beyond Meat today. And this is a stock that, again, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, it just IPO'd a couple of weeks slash months ago at this point. It's 
very, very overvalued right now. But stocks like this, just because they're overvalued um, for the long term perspective of the company, because I think this market cap is about 10 billion right now and they only make like $50 million a year in revenue or something like that. Don't quote me, but I know the market cap is way overvalued for what they're bringing in in sales. Just because it's overvalued doesn't mean that you can't hop in and out of it on um, day trades or short-term swing trades because the stock is volatile, right? So just because it's overvalued, don't be scared to trade it. Just realize the amount of risk involved with a company like this that's gone up 4x in the past couple of weeks. Realize that it can fall down just as quick because it is a speculative stock. I don't think they're making any money right now. They're not profitable. They just IPO'd. Very, very spec play here. And please, 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 you know, do your research, do your due diligence before even considering trading or buying this due to the risk that it carries. And don't trade it based on my opinion, guys. Please just do your own research on this. But it does offer a bunch of opportunities. So that's pretty much all I ended up doing today. I traded BYND and the uptrend is looking beautiful, guys. Let's say this hype continues. We might be hitting $200 per share, but as it gets higher, higher and higher, more overvalued, I'm probably going to be staying away um, from Beyond Meat because, again, it can crash like that any second, and I don't want to be caught um, bag-holding this one. That's something that not anybody, I don't think anybody would want to be caught bag holding, right? So that's kind of it for my trade today. Um, let me know down below in the comment section what you ended up doing. I would love to know. So let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here, you know, heading on for the rest of this week. And quick announcement, actually, I'm going to Mexico tomorrow. So these next couple of days, I'm going to be there for about um, eight, nine, I think it's like 10 days I'm going to be there. There's going to be content on this channel, but the market updates might be a bit irregular because I'm not sure the time difference right now with um, Mexico and the upload schedule that I'm going to be doing. But just know there are going to be videos coming out, maybe not daily, but maybe every other day. I'm going to try to do the market updates daily, but just figured I'd let you guys know and expect a video tomorrow on um, a very interesting topic that I want to talk to you guys about. It's not going to be a market update video, but it's going to be a very interesting topic, and I'm sure you guys will really enjoy um, tomorrow's video. So that's just a quick announcement. Know that I'm going to be in Mexico. Might not be as active um, in the chats, in the Facebook group, um, you know, on the YouTube comments, simply because I'm going to be traveling. So let's talk about... Um, some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching right now, mostly these ETFs. So I'm liking the gold movement that I'm seeing right now. Um, gold pulled back today. It really didn't pull back today. It actually pulled back a couple of days ago from 1360 down to about 1340. And today we, we were up 20 cents, really nothing much here on gold. But the thing that I'm liking is the fact that we held this 50 SMA support here. So what this is telling me is that this can be a potential bottom out point for gold before it ends up bouncing up and retesting those highs at about 1362. What we need to see right now, though, is a definitive break up here back into, let's say, the mid 1340s, maybe low 1350s before we can confirm that push on gold. And what will go up when that happens, guys? If that happens, JNUG. And JNUG is a bull ETF that I love trading. It goes up whenever gold is going up at a 3x rate. So this one, it's going to be good in my personal opinion here over the next couple of days. And I'm definitely looking to play this. Maybe not tomorrow because, again, I'm going to be traveling. It might be kind of tricky to trade from the airport. I have a layover flight in uh in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow so maybe I can like hop into a swing um before the one flight and hopefully come out of the flight um with a profit but I don't know if I'm gonna do that guys to be completely honest with you all I might just take the day off trading tomorrow but I'm still going to be watching these four potential plays crude oil ended up uh not really getting uh uh, uh, uh you know uh 
really hardly rejected today, but it did end up still getting um, um, kind of uh, rejected under this 50 SMA. It's still having some difficulty breaking out of their resistance, although we haven't fully dove down yet for that lower low. And that's actually what I'm waiting for tomorrow. Since we didn't really see a crazy red day today, but we did see the resistance that is still there, which is that 50 SMA, you know, I'm thinking tomorrow could be a big dumping day for crude oil. You know, if we do get that breakdown to let's say $51 again, maybe $51.80, $51.70, that could be the confirming thing that I want to see before hopping into um, DWT and before really confirming the push to the downside here. And for those of you guys that don't know, DWT is actually an ETF that goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So keep an eye on this one. It's a 3x ETF. So it goes up three times what crude oil does end up selling off. So let's say crude oil sells off 2%. DWT should be up around 6%. So those two right now are looking very good. And obviously if crude oil, let's say it breaks out of that 50 SMA, let's say we make a, a bullish run there, you know, UWT is going to be very good in my eyes. It's battered down here and it goes up whenever crude oil is going up. So that is um, a couple, those are rather a couple of ETFs that I am watching heading on um, to the rest of this week. Facebook is a stock that I'm watching because Facebook, as many of the other tech stocks have been getting crushed, they are on downtrends. Facebook right now is actually one of the only ones that is out of this downtrend. Although it's very overbought, you can't deny that the RSI is all the way up at nearly 90 right now. You. I mean, but we did end up breaking out of the 180 SMA. We're making higher highs, higher lows, and the uptrend right now seems like it's continuing itself. And this could be because Facebook doesn't really have any expo exposure at all to China right now, and a lot of the other tech stocks, they do. So this can be something that is propelling Facebook a bit higher than some of the other stocks in the stock market, especially, you know, like Apple, for example. But again, it's overbought. It's it's reaching that level of resistance at about $190. But now what I would like to see is a potential rejection there, a pullback down to about maybe the low 180s before potentially entering Facebook. A level that I think could be a, a, a level of support here could be about $180 because notice how we kind of plateaued, consolidated at that level for a little bit a couple of weeks ago or a couple of trading days ago rather and we propelled up from there. So a healthy pullback, I think a healthy retracement would be back down to about this old level of resistance, making it a new level of support, or maybe a bit above it, like 181, you know, 182. I think that could be a very nice entry point on uh, Facebook. So AMD, you know, AMD, let's take a look at what it did today. Um, you guys can see semiconductor stocks, at least AMD, continued its sell-off. So at this point, I'm not looking to play it because we broke the critical level of support, which was an old resistance, at about $30. We could potentially get a bounce back here because, again, it's very overbought, RSI is very oversold, but... I don't know, guys. I need to see some definitive action pre-market hours to the upside before even um, trading AMD at this point due to the key technical spot that it just broke. Let's take a look at some other uh, semi-stocks. You guys can see MU was down about 0.7% today. Qualcomm up about 0.5%. Okay, that's not bad. Let's see Intel down about 6 cents. Nothing really crazy here. So semis, they didn't really rebound at all, but they didn't really dump much harder other than um, AMD, at least out of the ones that I personally track here. Um, Tesla, let's take a look at Tesla. I actually didn't even look at it today. Oh my goodness, guys. Tesla, here it goes. Wow. Up $10.11 at close, up 4.7%. Could this be the point in time where Tesla is finally getting out of this downtrend? We can see it's slowly breaking out of this 180 simple moving average. This can be a point in time where we reverse, but I'm not fully convinced quite yet because like I've been saying, guys, the, the narrative around Tesla right now is super negative, and until we get some very, very 
um, great production numbers, until we get a strong earnings report, until we get maybe some profit out of Tesla, you know, for, for a change of the narrative, I really don't see it fully recovering until we get that. So those are just a couple of plays that I'm watching, you know, Tesla here for maybe a breakout at this point, you know, Facebook, market ETFs, TVIX, SQQQ, SPXS, of course, these are all ones that I'm always watching and watching, you know, for this week, crude oil, gold, UWT, DWT, JNUG, JDST, you know, drip right now is on the 50 SMA here on a pullback. This can be a nice bounce back play tomorrow. This one trades on um, XOP, goes up whenever XOP is selling off. These are very interesting plays as of right now. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to see more content from me, Go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And feel free to drop a comment. Let me know how you guys did today. Let me know what you guys um, think about the markets. And if you have any tips on Mexico, what to do there, things to keep an eye out for, feel free to drop that in the comment section as well too, guys, because I've never been to Mexico. I'm excited, but I'm a bit anxious as well. So I do want to know anything that 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 that's worth knowing so leave that in the comments if you guys know anything i'll catch you all in tomorrow's video again there won't be a market update video but there will be a very interesting video um regarding the current state of the stock market so keep an eye out for that i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching peace out